tell us a story. Yes, tell, tell us, us a story. story. All righty. It is cool, but the sun's out, kind of warming up the surface of everything. It's not bad today at all. Gonna get in, get to the store, start our day, help people out, do what we can. Gotta let the gopher warm up just a little bit. So, story time. <laughs> We we'll need to get gas too. We're running low on that. The uh, been talking lately about uh, the air rifles and hunting and being out plinking things. You know, just uh, basic farm memories and and everything. I had uh, on that air rifle. It was really cool. Um, I can't remember the serial uh, the the model number on it, but it was the big Crossman. It was the elite, almost like sniper thing from the '60s, late '60s, early '70s. It. Uh, it was really cool. I mean, it, it shot a five millimeter. Yeah, it was a five millimeter projectile, uh, shaped like a little silo, uh, really big and round. Had one uh, air seat ring on the back, soft, very soft lead. Uh, so it when it filled the chamber pretty good, but it got a lot of drag in the chamber. So we used to wet them, put them in our mouth, wet them, and put them in, and that sealed them even better. And they they used to get slick and go shooting out the barrel which you know added to the spin trajectory distance the whole bit accuracy so i used to take and it was hard because it was a single shot and it was a little teeny bolt so you had to flip that little bolt over and pop it out and then put that in there and then flip it back over and then set the uh set the safe uh prime it pump it set the safety off and then you could shoot it and then you had to unlock it set the safety back pull it back over, do it in water. So it was time consuming. So by the time you would shake out a, a, a projectile, the, the bullet, the lead out of the canister or reach in your pocket or do this or do that. I mean, I tried a pouch, I did everything, wet it, put it in and fire and stuff. I mean, it just took a lot of time. So I, <laughs> in my superior intelligence got the idea well, I'll just put it in my mouth and hold it in my mouth that way. And when I pull it off, I can put it back in and whatever. And it's already wet and I'm carrying it anyway, so, so forth and so on. Um, so it got to where I would take a handful of them. I mean, a handful of them. Put it in my mouth and hold it in my mouth. That way they would be wet and ready to go each time I wanted to load. And I didn't have to fiddle with them. And whatever, and so I got much faster at being able to, that little single shot to be able to do it. Three pumps, pop, 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 pow. Three pumps, pop, 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 pow. Well, I was in the barn and uh, it was a slate roofed barn and the pigeons were just horrendous. So it's a three story barn. The pigeons were just horrendous and were crapping on over everything. And you get a lot of pigeon, you get a lot of pigeon dung on Timothy, which is already, Timothy's really tight and packed and everything, and it has a high acidic content in it, uh, content in it, and you get the, the defecation of the pigeons on top of that, and the sun comes out, so you've got that little bit of moisture, high acidic count, lots of flammable material, it had been known to set things on fire. I watched it. If you put too much moisture on something that that's tightly packed and the sun comes out and the heat goes up in those, it, it gets to be something interesting. Anyway, so we were supposed to shoot all the pigeons to, to clear them out, and, and there were hundreds of them. But we weren't supposed to shoot inside the barn. We were supposed to get them so we could see through the window where they would perch as they were coming in or going out and shoot them as they were coming in and going out, which was fine. But I had my mouth full of these projectiles and we're up in there and the slate roof, you don't want to shoot inside a slate roof because it's really expensive and a lot of damage on a slate roof. So I was waiting and I was shooting, they would land, they would come in and out of the window or the, the, the hayloft on each side where we drop the, the bales out. And I mean, you're I'm two stories up shooting a story up and I couldn't get the right angle, couldn't got the, get the right angle. So I came down to the bottom and I thought, well, I'll shoot up this way and just to the window with the beam. 
Well, it worked out pretty good, pretty good, pretty good, and I was following one, and it was fluttering around, fluttering around, and I shot, and there were uh, old oak slats that held the slates in place, and then they were wired through the through the slates with uh, iron wiring. I mean, it's uh, it was really wild. As a, it, it, it was ancient, but it held everything in place. And it, the projectile, I pumped it up, so I went to seven pumps. Seven pumps is as hard as you could pump it. It wouldn't go anymore. There's no way you could force it into another pump. So I had it up to seven pumps, which is a lot for that gun. I put the shell, uh, the uh, projectile in, and I've still got a mouth full of them. I mean, a big handful of them in my mouth. And I shoot, and when I shoot, I miss the pigeon. It darted back around, and I hit one of those oak slats. The oak slat gave and bounced that projectile back. That projectile came all the way, and I'm shooting almost straight up. That projectile came right back to me and hit me just below my belt, just a blow uh, above, yes. <laughs> and I went, ooh, because it hit with a lot of force right on the area. <laughs> And I swallowed that handful of lead projectiles. I thought I was going to, because it was a big handful, I thought I was going to die. I went, oh no, oh no. And I tried to throw up, I couldn't throw them up, I couldn't get them back out, so I've got this big handful of lead in my belly. I go into the house to tell them, uh, into the farmhouse and tell them what's going on. They called some vet someplace, I'm sure, and uh, they told me to just uh, uh, take some laxatives. So, of course, on the farm, it's Epsom salts or what they call salts, and they would do that, and they'd make you a big glass, and they'd take that and whatever, and you would crap yourself silly for a day. Well, I never did find the projectiles, but they always made fun that, hey, Don, did you hear ping, 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 ping yet? I said, no. And they go, well, they're still in there then. Here, drink this. No, no more. After about two days of that, there was no more drinking nothing, no more worrying about pooping nothing out. They either dissolved, and that's part of my neurological problem, or I passed them out and they were silent. But there was no ping, ping, ping. End of story time. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and get some gas, get into the store. Let's ride. get in and start our day. Um, yeah, that story time from swallowing all those lead pellets. Uh, I'm sure it had some effect on uh, poisoning my brain, but <laughs> it uh, it happened. I'm going to go in here, take care of business. I'm going to do my thing. You all take care of each other. Do your thing. See ya. Story time is over. <laughs>